some positivity, I would say, on the return of sports, although I still think it's absolutely insane that most sports leagues aren't already back when you look at the data rolling in on the coronavirus and the fact that it is rapidly sliding away. And we're still talking about the NBA coming back on July 31st. And Major League Baseball is still dilling and dallying as they go back and forth. Sounds like MLS is working towards a closer return. But I hit on this last week, but I think it's worth repeating. If you look at the countries of England, France, Spain, and Italy in Europe, all of them have infinitely worse breakouts, outbreaks, death rate than the United States does. I know a lot of people don't talk about it because like, oh, the United States is the worst ever. We have the most cases. Like you have to adjust for per capita. And we're a lot bigger country than those European countries are. If you adjust per capita, Italy, Spain, France, all of them have worse outbreaks and deaths than we did. Okay, so they're all back. We've got the EPL back training in England. We've got La Liga back in Spain. And we have Serie A coming back in Italy. And yet they had an infinitely worse outbreak in those countries than we did. And their sports teams are going to be back six weeks before ours are. If anything, we should be back before they are. Now, the NBA decision is maybe the most intriguing because Major League Baseball has blown it, but Major League Baseball always has to go head-to-head with football when it gets to the World Series and its postseason in October. This is utterly ridiculous to me. The NBA is making the decision now to go, uh, according to the report, and you just heard Eddie Garcia break it down, their Game 7 wouldn't happen until October 12th under the calendar that they have proposed right now. So if you go look at uh, at the calendar and think about October 12th as being their Game 7, their Game 7 would be on Monday night, going head-to-head with Monday night football, in theory. And Monday night football would crush the NBA Game 7, I think. I think more people would watch Monday night football head-to-head than would watch Game 7. And I think in general, the NBA would have a lot of difficulty competing with college football and with the NFL. And for a long time, we had that conversation about, hey, would college football uh, come back? Would the NFL come back? I think we've taken the next step because I don't know if you saw this, but USC announced, I believe, that they will come back for classes on August 17th, which means that Basically, I I know the Pac-12 state schools still have to figure out what's going on with UCLA and Cal. I don't think they've officially announced uh, what their calendar will look like. But all that talk about whether USC and Alabama would play to start the season, it seems like that is now a go, that that will be taking place. Um, And I think we're going to not only have the games taking place, I think we're going to have a lot of fans there. I think it's possible we're going to have totally full stadiums. I think, in fact, it's very likely that we will have totally full stadiums as you look at uh, the trajectory. Now, the state of Texas is already said that 25% capacity can exist for their outdoor uh, sporting events in that state. And now there is talk that there will be a uh, that there will be crowds present potentially for NASCAR in June in Florida. So we've gone pretty quickly from will there be sports? The answer is yes, because remember there's people out there listening to me right now who were like, nothing's going to happen until 2021. It might be 2022. Remember the state of California? Gavin Newsom's like, oh, there's no events that are going to happen that have crowds in the state of California until 2021. And every time you put on the news now, there's tens of thousands of people walking around protesting. I don't want to get into the protesting uh, angle here, but there's not much difference from a viral perspective from people protesting or people going to a sporting event. What I mean by that is the virus doesn't discriminate 
in how it spreads based on what the motivations are for the people getting together and moving about in close concert. So if you are able to have tens of thousands of people standing shoulder to shoulder all over the country to protest, and you're doing that, why could you not have people go to games? I think there are a lot of people asking that question. And again, from a viral perspective, it's not about what the motivation is for the protest. People are like, well, it's a lot more serious to be protesting than it is to go to a football game. Okay. But from a viral perspective, there's no difference. The virus doesn't care why people are standing close together when it decides, uh, when it's able to spread. So we've moved really quickly from we can't do anything, we can't have big crowds ever again, to now we are talking about going to have games with crowds present. I think it's just a no-brainer. I think it's an absolute no-brainer that we will have maybe full stadiums for college football and the NFL this fall. And partly that's a function of the numbers declining rapidly with the coronavirus. Now, maybe it's possible that because all these protests, we're going to see a lot more infections. But if that happens, by and large, the people who are getting infected are going to tend to be younger. So the question would be, can we just keep them away from older people Because if you are under the age of 24, you're more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to die of the coronavirus. By the way, that October 12th game that Game 7 of the NBA Finals would compete with, Chargers at Saints, which is Week 5 of the NFL season. The question I would have in general about the way the NFL season is going to to break down going head-to-head with the NBA is... I think the NFL teams are going to be playing in their home stadiums, and I think they'll be playing with at least, you know, every state will have a different rule probably that they put in place, but I think they'll be playing in front of at least a decent number of fans. So why is the NBA NBA going to Disney World? Right, I mean, like the NBA going to Disney World, the NBA seems so far behind here now, and let me explain what I mean. The NBA going to Disney World initially was about them being able to quarantine and being able to avoid having to travel and have exposure to other people. But Disney World is going to be open up for three weeks for people to be able to go to Disney World before the NBA uh, postseason or before the NBA season restarts on July 31st. So what is the point here of being at Disney World now, when in theory, by July 31st, I think almost every team could be playing at home, in their home arena. Now, the NBA may not want to bring back fans on July 31st, and I certainly understand the idea of being uh, careful there, but by July 31st, things are going to look substantially different in terms of health than they do now, I think the NBA is setting itself up to look ridiculous by being located at Disney World when one month later, NFL and college football teams are going to be playing in front of, you know, potentially full crowds for their games. Does this make sense to you guys? Let me bring in the crew. Danny G, does that make sense to you? Like, well, everybody knows that I'm of the opinion that Major League Baseball, the NBA, MLS, NHL, they should all already be back. What up, Dub? Get a five count. The idea of the What's NBA not starting one, two, until July three, 31st, four, that's almost two months from now. Cool things. Two months. I think this virus is going to be significantly less of an issue than it is now. It may almost be gone in terms of an overall impact in the nation, at least for the summer. And then the NBA is still going to be at Disney World? I mean, when you can go to Harry Potter Land and you can go to water parks and you can go to the Magic Kingdom at Disney World and the NBA is still playing with no crowds present and then every college and NFL team is going to have some variation, I believe, of crowds present for their games, doesn't it seem a little bit ridiculous? makes no sense the disney world plan should have been in action right now amen like baseball they, players should have been training already 
then yeah. I would be like, this makes sense. But the yeah. entire purpose of a quarantine, when we started talking about this, like all of the Vegas casinos, I believe I'm correct in this, open tomorrow. So you're going to be able to yeah. go to casinos all over the country. You're going to be able to go to amusement parks. And the NBA is going to be quarantining its players. And uh, and you're not going to be able to watch any of their games and they have to be in one location. It just it's it's nonsensical. They're going to be acting as if it's phase two when everybody else in the country is in phase three. Or so you, you know, everybody else in the country is just over the coronavirus. Well, and I that's, think there's some truth to that. Yeah, and that was my next thing I was going to say was that if I can stand in line for a theme park, and now we know that Disney's going to take all the precautions. They're going to put the thing to your forehead and take everybody's temperature. And um, why can't the why can't the arenas do that? And if they need the uh, public to sign a waiver, I think a lot of people will do that because, as you mentioned, we've seen hundreds of thousands of people standing side by side right now. So, look, we just want sports back. So, if you are scared of liability, then put that on the fans. If I want to go see my team and I'm required to wear a mask and get my temperature taken and I have to sign something, if I really want to see them in person, I'm going to do whatever it takes to to see my team. I don't even know that you need crowds. I just think you can play in the home arenas. Like, why not start the NBA postseason off in the home arenas so you're not requiring the players or the uh, families to relocate anywhere? Well, couldn't they do it to, you know, a a certain sized crowd is what we thought was going to happen with college football? The NBA is going to be insane. That's what they're going to look like is ridiculous, I think. Yeah. Because I think they'll have to amend things because a month into the NBA postseason, when it's September – and there are huge crowds watching college football games in person, and the NBA is in Orlando playing games in a gym with no fans, it's going to look seismically different on television between the NFL and between the NBA. And I think the NBA is going to end up calling an audible on the idea of playing at Disney World and say, actually, you know what, we can go back to our home arenas. I'm not saying if they want to be super conservative – and just play in front of no crowds. I understand that. But there's going to be an easy way for the players to travel, um, you know, by that time. They have all have private jets. So I would think most players would rather stay in their hometowns and play in the home gyms, even if there aren't a substantial number of crowds present, uh, amount of people present. Dub, does this sound crazy to you now? Like, it seems to me like the NBA is not adjusting to on-the-ground news. Major League Baseball is just incompetent, but at least you can point to Major League Baseball, even though it's not a very good endorsement, and say, well, these millionaires and billionaires are fighting because it doesn't seem like Major League Baseball is at all focused on the uh, the actual health impact now. They've moved on to how much money are we going to get to play, which stinks, and they should already be back too. Uh, but I think baseball at least is is of the opinion they need to come back, and it seems like baseball will be taking place in the home stadiums, and I think there's a good chance there will be fans present, whereas the NBA, it sounds like they've got a plan that would have made sense in March, only it's almost going to be August before they actually debut it. Yeah, the whole Disney World thing at this moment makes no sense. It, like Danny G said, it makes sense that they're playing right now, but by yeah. the time they're having the games – they're going to be doing the overhead blimp shots of Disney World where they're playing, and there's going to be thousands <laughs> right. of people waiting in line for roller coasters. That's right. It's, and, it's going to look ridiculous. People are going to be like, wait a minute, why can you go to why, – yeah, why can tens of thousands of people literally be next door to where the NBA is playing in amusement park lines? Like, you can be standing in line for Splash Mountain or, Spa, uh, Sp- <laughs> Splash Mountain or Space Mountain if you're familiar with the Magic Kingdom in Orlando at all. And you're not able to sit and watch an NBA game? Like, yeah. It's and, crazy. And you just mentioned the private planes. I mean, it's not like it's not like the Heat are getting on a Southwest flight to That's fly right. to Indianapolis They're with not a bunch the of other C people. Group. Yeah. They're not the seaboarding group. They got their own plane. They're going to be pretty much quarantined on the plane. They'll be quarantined during the game, and then they get on the plane and go home. I just don't even – it makes literally no sense to me. Eddie, does, do you, do, I haven't heard a lot of people talking about this, but it's important if you are the commissioner or you are the leader of a league to evolve with the information that you receive. The NBA's idea to play at Disney World made sense in March when we started talking about it on this show. It made sense in April. It makes zero sense when they are starting 
on July 31st, literally right as August is arriving, even now on June the 3rd, it makes no sense. It certainly doesn't make sense as you consider where we're going to be as a country on July 31st. I don't know if Adam Silver has been asked about it. Maybe that will now come up. But I wonder if they're secretly keeping the door open to change their mind as things evolve. I I thought I heard, and this doesn't make any sense, unless they're considering about changing their mind. I thought I heard that the final schedule was still going to include travel days, which makes no sense. There's no traveling going on. Why would they do that unless maybe they're... They're hedging oh, their bets a little bit and, yeah. and thinking that they may be able to do it in change, person yeah, with we, home for, home court. Right, right. Yeah, or they're just the, the the including travel days is just an acknowledgement that guys' bodies need the ret- recovery, and part of the travel day is about the recovery issues. But I think if the NBA, for instance, if the NBA wanted to make an adjustment and go back to traveling, I think they could go back to a two three two, right? The format that used to exist for a seven-game series, so you limit how many flights you have to take. Instead of right now, you go two games to the you know the home team, two games to the, the road team, and then you go 1-1-1, one, 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 right, which requires a lot more travel in order to do that 1-1-1. One, one, one. I would just adjust it for this season to a 2-3-2, two, two, especially because it doesn't seem like there's going to be any home court at all based on the NBA's uh, suggestions. Now, I do understand how some leagues could end up in complicated situations when it comes to crowds coming back. For instance, the states that opened first, whether it's Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, or uh, Tennessee or Texas, all of which have you know multiple sports teams in them, pro sports teams in them, could they make the decision to allow crowds? Whereas, let's say teams from New York and California could not. That's a little bit interesting, right? Because then you're trying to adjust for a home crowd advantage that, say, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers might have, but Tom Brady's old team, the New England Patriots, might not, right? Because Boston has had more severe issues than Tampa has. So is it possible that Tampa's like, hey, everybody show up. You're easy and able to come and hang out and watch the game here. And then if you're a New England Patriots fan, you can't. Or even Wilder in division, you think about the way that, uh, let's say, the teams from the Jets and the Patriots and the Bills might have a different uh, rule than the Miami Dolphins. So how does that potentially impact things? If the Dolphins could have a home crowd and a home uh, field advantage, and then when they traveled to Foxborough or they traveled to uh, uh, up to New Jersey to play against uh, the Jets, or who knows what's going to happen in Buffalo, there's no home crowd. In, theor- in theory, that would be a pretty good advantage for the Miami Dolphins in that division. What do you think about this, Roberto? Does it sound like the NBA's plan might have made sense in March or April, but makes no sense as we think about August? Yeah, exactly. It seems like it makes, it makes no sense now – what Dub said about the, seeing the blimp and seeing everybody else having fun and uh, uh, crowds outside of Disney World. And, That's really funny to yeah, think about. It's really funny. And then uh, when you mentioned baseball, I, I just mentioned about to Danny off off the air about the same thing that you mentioned about baseball not even having the you know, the whole their whole damn thing is uh, talking uh, uh, discussing money and not even talking about the coronavirus. Well, the pro- part of the problem is also now I think they're discussing is is. Um, uh, the whole the owner's whole issue was like, oh, there was not, we're not going to have fans in in in, in the in our, the ballpark, so we're going to lose we're going to lose this certain amount of money. Now, the problem is, uh, you know, in Florida and in, in Texas, I believe already they already said that they have stadiums can have up to twenty percent of fans. So you yeah, think, which, you think, is, exactly. which is like a full crowd for the Miami Marlins or exactly. the uh, or the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Exactly. So you think the Rangers and the Astros are not going to have fans in their stadiums when they're allowed to? Of course they are. So that's probably part of the issue of what they're discussing. Yeah, and look, baseball has dillied and dallied to such an extent that they may be able to talk about having fans back by August one or whatever the case may be. But I just think. As you look at this, the NBA has not adjusted in real time and come up with a plan that makes sense based on the current data. It's like they came up with a plan in April and they're sticking to it, even though two months from now, it's going to look ridiculous. I really do think that's a good analogy from Dub, where if you had a blimp like flying over Orlando, (laughs) you would have Disney World, Epcot, Animal Kingdom, 
not only those three, but also down the road a little bit, Universal Studios, Legoland is already open. Those places would be swarmed with people at amusement parks. You might even have water parks back open, and the NBA is going to be playing in an empty gym. I think it's just going to look ridiculous because people are going to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> I can go get in, go to any theme park in Florida with thousands of people around, and I can't watch a basketball game? I think it's just going to be crazy.